Bishano kept delivering as we entered another world called Nature World. As soon as you walk through the entrance, you're among several native species, like these fellas, who are happy to take a few selfies. Nature World is spread over 150 acres of parkland and lagoons, and we arrived just in time to observe the feeding habits of... <coughs> the Tasmanian Devil. So the Tassie Devils are the largest living marsupial carnivore on Earth. Um, unfortunately, since the extinction of the, the thylacine, the Tassie Tiger, as far as we know anyway, since 1936. This particular pair are called Kit and Millie, and their bite force is about four to five times that the strength of a dog, the same size. Quite keen on that drumstick. Once they sink their teeth in, there's not much getting food back off them. Now, I don't know if you guys at home can hear or not, but that bone, is absolutely no competition for this little fella. And Chris has just got his fingers there holding onto a drumstick in front of me. Have you ever had an accidental hit? Oh, absolutely, but it's never their fault. Uh, here's the thing, they do have relatively limited eyesight and it's very much based on movement. So, for example, if I wiggle the meat in front of them, I do get their attention quite quickly. Uh, they will frequently sink their teeth into what moves. Our guide, Chris, continued feeding the other devils, explaining their habits and characteristics that make them so unique. They um, do tend to follow the smell of the meat, but they They'll also follow basically the uh, the sounds of the other devils. So when they start to hear other devils feeding, they go, hang on a minute, that's the direction of the food. With all his fingers intact, Terry met Tazzy, who's participating in the wombat program here at Nature World. She again was sadly an orphan off the roadside. So she was found locally inside mum's pouch. Um, just needed a bit of TLC. Yeah. The aim for most of our wombats is release, so it's a big part of what we try and do. Sarah introduced me to Betty the Beitong, who is part of the rehabilitation program. This little lady, <laughs> she is very friendly, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, she's sadly a orphan, so she came into the park, uh, was handed into a carer. Um, we do work with lots of carers around the state, uh, as well as members of the public that bring animals into us too. How big is the rehabilitation program here at Nature World? Um, so we do basically work with registered carers, so you have to be registered to look after animals like, like Betty here. Mm. Um, so a lot of the people on site are registered to do that. Betty's also part of another program here at Nature World. We do a lot of things with animals that um, sadly can't be reintroduced. So as you can tell, she's way too friendly. Betty here is actually also going to be part of a breeding program. So it's being established here in Tasmania. Um, the Tasmanian betong used to also occur on mainland Australia. Sadly disappeared due to many, many factors. Um, they are declining here in Tassie. Well, what a top afternoon out at Nature World at Bishano. That's right, Macca. And if you guys want to find out any more about anything you've seen today, why don't you head to whatsupdownunder.com.au to check out our free online magazine. Oh, mate's a bit hungry. Yeah, yeah settle down. <laughs> just click on the magazines tab. You'll get a drop down, subscribe and download. I'll just keep feeding the kangaroos. You just keep feeding everyone at home the information. <laughs> it's always worked. <laughs>